but according to a statement, the affected pupils are receiving counseling. Learners are being encouraged to speak out through the school's online anonymous reporting tool. For more on this, I'm joined by Gauteng's Education MEC, Panyaza Lesofi. Mr. Lesofi, good evening. Thanks very much um, for your time. Do you Thanks. believe that the school moved swiftly enough yeah. to deal with this? Thanks for the opportunity. And I want to thank the SGB. Uh, they've done a lot within a short space of time after receiving tip-ups about this matter. Uh, they appointed an independent legal firm to uh, investigate the matter and interview uh, the victims. And thereafter, uh, they filed a very impressive report uh, that they presented to the SGP. And the SGP, upon the suit of that report, act swiftly by suspending uh, uh, the teacher and also uh, assisting the police to investigate the matter. So we want to congratulate the school uh, and we want to ensure that the disciplinary hearing is, com is completed uh, as soon as possible. Well, the school governing body says it consulted extensively um, on this matter. Were you among those that it consulted? Yes, we are consulted and uh, we, we provided the relevant advice. And this is how we want schools to, to perform because we really want schools to take actions on their own because the laws are there, the regulations are there. You don't need an MEC flying or uh, walking all over trying to resolve some of these problems. We have empowered our SGBs to deal with these matters in this particular fashion. I'm impressed uh, that the SGB of this particular school have acted in this, in, in this fashion. But what, we what can't tolerate this form of sexual harassment. What was, what was your advice to them? Well, it's to, 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 to institute a disciplinary hearing, suspend uh, the relevant teacher immediately, but most importantly, assist in, in opening a criminal charge uh, with, the, with, with the relevant law enforcement agencies. What have been, I mean, what has been your experience, though? What is often making it difficult uh, for the survivors and victims of um, this kind of harassment to come forward? Well, it's, it, it, it's mainly because learners want to continue their studies. Uh, secondly, they don't want their parents to know. Uh, and thirdly, uh, the torture and the trauma of going through uh, the disciplinary hearing and relating the story. That is why immediately when we received this information, because uh, I went through uh, the chat sheet, uh, it's horrifying stories. Uh, and from the experience that we had from the Parktown boys, uh, we felt that we need to come in and come in quickly. Uh, we provided counseling and provided support and uh, the report recommended that uh, they must give uh, uh, evidence in camera, which is something that we will strongly, strongly support because this protect learners, it encourages other people to feel free to provide the relevant evidence that we need. But I want to salute the school, salute the learners themselves. It's very, very difficult if you check the report. Uh, you can see the relationship was very, very close with the educator. They regarded the educator as a father figure. So for them to come and say this happened, uh, they were brave and want to thank them. And uh, if the allegations are confirmed by this disciplinary hearing, uh, we'll advise the school to take the appropriate action. And that appropriate action is to terminate the contract immediately. Uh, blacklist the, print, the teacher so that he cannot teach in any way in, in our country. But most importantly, ensure that the uh, uh, the, fraud, uh, the case that has been opened with the police is attended to. And there's an additional uh, charge as well that the school has established. We also uh, advise the school to go ahead with it of financial mismanagement by the same teacher uh, that uh, he was collecting some finances from learners and parents but not depositing or alerting the school. So we've added that charge as well so that we've got a watertight case uh, that will assist us to conclude this matter as speedily as possible. Uh Looking at the way this particular governing body dealt with this matter, is it uh, for you a signal that uh, school governing bodies are beginning to do um, you know, the right things as quickly as possible and the way they are supposed to be done? Or is this particular um, governing body, Bryanston High Schools, um, an exception? Now, the maturity of our uh, training programs, uh, it's also the relationship uh, that we've developed with School Governing Body Association after we're hit by many sexual 
uh, assault cases within the schooling environment. So we put up the team to really train SGBs on how to manage uh, cases and also how to ensure at all times uh, they work with the police. And I think this uh, school governing body came out uh, with flying colors, and I'm, I'm impressed. I'm very happy with that. But we'll monitor the situation because we need to monitor three important things. Is the charge sheet uh, watertight? And I'm convinced it is. Two, do we have evidence? And I'm convinced we have evidence. Three, have you know, uh, appropriately notified uh, uh, the affected person? Yes, they did. So I'm quite impressed with them. And we'll monitor the situation. And I want to apologize to the parents of the learners, most importantly to the learners themselves, that uh, this happened during schooling activities. And you know, it happened during netball matches. It happened through... Uh, uh, school trips and other related matters. And those are uh, events where learners must be free, it's events that learners must be protected. So uh, we are not immune as a department as well. So we need to find a mechanism of closing those loopholes so that we can protect our children at all times. Who do you believe are the other stakeholders who, uh, if they could also, you know, put their shoulder to the wheel, um, we will go far, a long way in, in actually dealing with this problem. You are happy with yeah. the school governing bodies and as you say from the, you believe that the programs you've put them through are beginning to yield some results. What is still missing that which you think uh, can still, you know, be done by perhaps other stakeholders? With a heavy heart is the law enforcement agencies to be quite frank. Uh, we've just lost a case of uh, one uh, of our patrollers in Soweto. Uh, I mean, the, if you check that uh, chat sheet, it had lots and lots of learners participating. Then the law enforcement agencies uh, tried, but the court was uh, damning in their findings to say you didn't follow processes, you didn't work all those things. So we want law enforcement agencies to come to the party, uh, that they must take this matter seriously, they must not handle them clumsy, but most importantly, they must protect their evidence, because in the absence of evidence, you can't find uh, someone guilty. So it's very, very important that the law enforcement agencies uh, assist us and play their part. But I'm happy with the SGBs and the parents of the kids uh, that they protected and supported their children, and we need to do so until the matter is finalized. Their kid, the hearing is going on on the 5th and the 6th of February, uh, and uh, we'll monitor the case closely. Uh, when needs be, we'll be in a position to provide all the relevant support as a department. Okay, that's what we're going to leave it for now. Thanks very much for coming through. Gauteng's Education, MEC Panyaza Lesufi.